Well, dog fans, I couldn't be more excited. Now, this season preview is going to take a look at all the opponents Georgia is going to face in the 2020 season, beginning with the University of Virginia Cavaliers and concluding with those nerds on North Avenue. I should mention, by the way, I'm recording this in February of 2020. I'm just too excited about the season. I, I wanted to go ahead and get a jump on it. I mean, why not, right? What could go wrong? Welcome back to The Jerry Tanner Show, brought to you by the UGA Alumni Association. Here we are, and uh, boy, I always wanted more SEC games, but uh, yikes. We are about to embark on maybe the strangest season of Georgia football ever. So let's see who we got. Week one, Arkansas. Now I've got no doubt that with time, our beloved former offensive line coach will build the Hogs into a roster just loaded with talent. But he inherited a team that has 19 consecutive SEC losses. So, sorry, Coach Pitt. Week two, Auburn. It is 2020. Disease grips the land. Tommy Tuberville's running for Senate. And Georgia plays Auburn in October. In this 125th edition of the Deep South's Oldest Rivalry, we will find out if Auburn can replace their entire offensive line, as well as defensive standouts Derek Brown and Marlon Davidson, all of whom left following 2019. My guess... new. No. Week 3, Tennessee. It's year 3 for Jeremy Pruitt up on Rocky Top, and things could be better. Now let's be fair, Tennessee did finish 2019 on a six-game winning streak. Granted, the toughest opponent of those six was Indiana, who, depending on who you ask, finished the season ranked somewhere between others receiving votes and Indiana. Week four, Alabama. Bama's still Bama, even after finishing last season ranked 13th. So this one's going to be a fight, as these smart V-saving games always are. I want this one. I want it bad. But if I've learned anything over these last six months, it's that, uh... Nope, I got nothing. We have got to beat them this time. Please, I'm begging. Week five, Kentucky. Mark Stoops now has the best winning percentage among Kentucky head coaches since 1961. Now, that winning percentage may only be 500, but still, you gotta watch out for the Cats. And because this game comes after Bama, but before Florida, you might be hearing some Gucci Mane, because this is a trap game. I couldn't possibly be any lamer. Just because we've got to be socially distant doesn't mean we got to be... dog distant. Still working on that one. This past spring and summer, the Alumni Association started moving their events online. You may have seen some of them. Tack Today 5K, Ask Me Anything, between the pages, well, they're not stopping there. 40 under 40 is coming up, along with a special Beat Week challenge for the Auburn game, and plenty more all online, including a whole host of ways you can bring that Saturday in Athens experience into your living room. So make sure you follow UGA alumni on social media and update your info at alumni.uga.edu slash update to stay plugged in on what's coming up. Let's jump back in. Week 7. Ugh. Georgia has beaten Florida three games in a row at this point, and if Kirby does it again, that will be the longest win streak on either side of the series in 17 years. It will be the first time Georgia's won four in a row in almost 30 years. So this figures to be yet another heavyweight bout, a worthy entry in the storied history of the world's largest outdoor football contest. Week 8, Mizzou. The Tigers have been part of the SEC East for eight years now, and in that time, they've beaten Georgia once. But, hey, they got a new head coach this year, and it's former Appalachian State head coach Eli Dr Drin Drin Drinquits. Drink Drinquits? Coach D. Week 9, Mississippi State. Mike Leach returns to the Classic City for the first time since 1997, when he was the offensive coordinator for Kentucky. Now, Leach's offensive prowess could give our defense some trouble, but if they're as good as we think they are, the D should be able to pivot and deal with Leach's scheme. I don't have a joke. I, I just really want to see this one. Week 10, South Carolina. Now Rodrigo Blankenship from 42 to try and extend the game. He pulled it! Unbelievable! 
Campbell. South Carolina wins. No quarter. No mercy. Hmm? Mm, what? No, oh, nothing. Nothing. Week 11. Vandy. You know, if we make it this far, there's no way to tell how these teams are going to change. Uh, there, there, there's no telling who's going to emerge as a playmaker and who's going to prove to be a bust. And don't forget that in Kirby's first year, Vandy did beat him. So, it's, it's just no telling. Um, but you can take those points and you can lay them. You can just lay them right on down. Nice, neat little row. Just boom, 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 boom. And that's your season. Never seen one like it. Probably won't see one like it again. And let's be honest, if uh, we don't all do our part to socially distance, wear masks and all that, we may not even see all of this one. That's a depressing prospect, but you might want to have a plan in place for your Saturdays just in case. Here's what I'm considering. Maybe it'll give you some ideas. Learn woodworking. Write a novella. Finally watch Parasite. Become a professional video game streamer. Cry in the basement. Declutter the house. Puzzles! Y'all be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell and you'll never miss an episode.